Let's take a look at the development and performance section. And we'll get there in Drupal 7 by going to configuration, development, performance. A couple big changes here in Drupal 8, but ones we've talked about earlier in the series. The first is that the cache pages for anonymous users option is now on all of the time by default in Drupal 8. In Drupal 7, this was more something that you really wanted to be conscious of because it was possible for anonymous users to see stale information. In Drupal 8, the caching mechanisms have been improved to the point where when there are changes to particular pieces of information, it will invalidate certain parts of the cache and refresh it automatically for anonymous users. So as long as the data hasn't changed, the cache won't be refreshed. This is awesome in and of itself, but the fact that it's on by default makes Drupal much faster out of the box in 8 because in Drupal 7, people had to know that you could click this button to cache pages for anonymous users, and it can take a little while to figure that out. The same thing goes for caching blocks. This new system also invalidates the need for minimum cache lifetime and expiration of cached pages. In Drupal 8, we have a page cache maximum life, which has to do with how long browsers will keep around a page. A page can tell a browser how long that page is current for, and if that page gets loaded again past that expiration date, then it will reload the page from the server. Within the browser, you can always force a refresh, but by default, the browser will try to use cached versions of pages and files until that expiration date has been met. The other big change is that under bandwidth optimization, aggregate CSS and JavaScript files is checked by default. One of the biggest front-end performance issues is the number of calls to the server for files. And in Drupal 8, the number of CSS and JavaScript files has increased quite a bit because they've become more modular. So it makes sense for these to be turned on by default. Also, one of the main reasons why you wouldn't have it on is for development purposes. So if you are an end user just installing Drupal to have a site out there in the wild, you won't need to see the individual CSS files. And as soon as you start the process of learning how to develop in Drupal, you'll learn pretty quick that you can disable these. So it's a much saner default. 